challenge themselves to grow and achieve academically, pursue their passions, navigate change, learn continuously, and contribute to the common good. Great. Awards and recognitions tonight? Yes, uh, so we have uh, some athletic uh, awards. We have had a very successful uh, fall, so we want to recognize, first of all, SHS tennis player uh, Margaret Bunaki, um, who finished sixth overall in number one signals at the uh, state tournament earlier, earlier this month, so congratulations to Margaret. Uh, additionally, we want to congratulate the SHS boys and girls cross-country cross teams who both qualified for the WIA state meet that will come up on this Saturday. Um, the boys took uh, second place and the girls took first place in their sectional. SHS uh, uh, junior Lucas Florsheim um, won the boys sectional championship individually. Uh, and then we had uh, on the girls side, we had Bella Lozier um, won the sectional and, and Annika Elliott um, took second for the girls. So they had a first and second place uh, finish. So congratulations to them and uh, good luck to both uh, full teams as they compete in the uh, state meet coming up on, uh, on Saturday. Also, congratulations to the SHS boys soccer team who won the regionals uh, one to nothing against Port Washington this past weekend. Now they advanced to the sectionals um, this upcoming Thursday, so in two days, um, here uh, and play New Berlin West at seven o'clock. So if anybody can come out and uh, cheer on the um, the kids, uh, that would be uh, fantastic. Seven o'clock on Thursday for soccer. And then lastly, I want a, a big congratulations to our mountain biking team, um, who was named state champion of uh, this season for the first time ever. So congratulations to that group. Um, it's a great accomplishment uh, for all the hard work and a newly formed uh, team not, not too long ago. Uh, it's having a lot of success. So uh, congratulations to everyone who participated there. And that concludes the recognitions for tonight. Great, thank you. Um, up next is approval of the 2018-2019 original budget and levy. So, uh, Patrick, uh, I will take a motion. I move that we approve the 2018-2019 original budget and levy. A second. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you had a executive summary, which essentially laid out everything that, you know, a summary of what the other two reports um, had for you. We um, completed our we completed our third Friday count. Uh, our enrollment was down uh, again a bit this year. Um, I will be bringing a, a more detailed report on enrollment um, next month. So, but just so you can see that the, the enrollment did go down. Um, although our three-year rolling average did increase. Um, we had slightly higher uh, property equalized value. Um, we, the, the, the state enroll or state um, general ed or general aid did go down a bit. So some of the numbers did fluctuate uh, if you compare them to the uh, annual meeting. But um, our all tax. All fund tax levy of twenty-one million six hundred fifty-nine thousand five hundred forty-three dollars brings us to a mill rate of thirteen dollars and eighty-eight point zero 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 cents. Uh, any questions? Otherwise, so um, in terms of the enrollment um, projections and uh, your upcoming discussion is going to just be looking at trends over time like what what are you going, going to kind of tell we're us gonna, we're going to look at the trends um, that we've experienced over the past few years and we're going to compare that to um, the projection that was done by the uh, through applied population oh, last year. okay okay so we'll and have a comparison we're going to look there. at what our actuals are okay. for example last year i don't know if you can remember with the, the counts but last year our 4k uh, was down about 40 students, and you know the the thought there is sometimes you can lose students in a 4K setting. Um, they'll they'll go somewhere different uh, for that 4K because 4K is a half day program, and so it's not uncommon for people to go places where they can you know automatically get wraparound care or whatnot. And so the big question is 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 this a blip? because of right. that, or okay. is this something that we have to be more concerned about? And our 4K enrollment again this year had that same, you know, we experienced had roughly the same numbers that we had last year, and our kindergarten numbers did not rebound uh, last year. So um, it's something we have to look, look into, and because you know, it's, it's 
just it's just something we have to we have to address. Um, okay. So when um, and so you're when are you bringing this back to us? We're going to bring that uh, back to the board in November. Okay. So and it will be lots of numbers and big spreadsheets. So okay. It makes me happy, but you know, hopefully you'll be able to see some of those trends and and that's essentially what we have to use for our predictors going forward. I've already started building um, our budget um, for the 1920 school year and I'm looking at those projections with our forecasting uh, firm that we use. So you know, we're, we're at it probably about two months earlier than we have been um, in the past. So we're very keenly aware of this, this Any other questions? Just as it relates to that, and I'm assuming you'll probably address this when you come back, or does that impact any outreach or communication efforts that we're making through other parts of the district to, to do something to you know, engage and with that is members, families, and all that sort of stuff? Correct. That's something that we're, we're going to have to um, address once we get those numbers. We're going to have to look at what, okay, so here's what, here's what we had a year ago what we had again this year what you know what do we need to do what are the, the, the I don't want to call it marketing but what are well, the what are the things that we're going to do yeah. in order to try to wrap our arms around that um, it's the difficulty in communities like Shorewood in in looking at you know for example birth rates and whatnot um, is you know, unlike the, the town where I grew up in where you, when, when you had a child you to the hospital in that town, whereas here there are hospitals all over the place that you can go to, and so it's difficult to track for data. And so we are looking at some other options that are utilized by some of our neighboring districts that we haven't done here um, to try to get that data um, that, and, and keep it a little bit more accurate. But just, we are, you know, there, there are uh, concepts that are in the works well, and I'm interested to hear from other di from other neighboring districts, just Are given seeing a similar trend. Well, similar trends, right? Millennial not having kids as early and mm -hmm. as often, and all those other things that are happening, just not in Shorewood, everywhere, um, and housing prices and available housing and all those sort of things that factor into this. I mean, Shorewood's not a cheap community. There are cheaper ones, so you know, I think some of that is outside of our control in some respects, but I'd be interested in sort of that comparative data with other districts to see if all of those numbers are lower, maybe, which one would typically assume. And that, that's, that's stuff that we do typically in the November North Shore Business Managers meeting. We have some greater conversation around the moment and all the trends. Um, because by that time, all of the school districts have gotten their moment data in. You know, they've had a month to sit and dissect that data a little bit and then we'll have some of those conversations. See how things are going on in North Shore. This is about the time in November when um, questionnaires start flying around all the business managers and they're asking about it. You know, but that's one of the things they talk about our enrollment trends. And, you know, we're, we, by no stretch of the imagination, are looking to reinvent the wheel. Other districts are dealing with the same thing. Other districts have ideas. We have ideas. We share those because we're all in the same business and educating children. Thank you. And the impact of uh, the loss of Chapter 220 students and our yearly discussions of open enrollment and adding seats, keeping them stagnant, what, what are your thoughts in terms of um, open enrollment at this point or is that something you're going to come back to us? And I'd rather come back once I have, once we've kind of on a, a deeper dive and had some conversation with the executive uh, cabinet um, about that. So I'd rather not shoot from the hip on that. Go ahead. Thanks. That's fair. That's, That's fair. fair. No, no, no. Thanks. Okay. I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, we have one uh, item on our consent agenda. I'll take a motion. I. Uh, Make a move. Uh, I move that we approve uh, my former PE teacher's retirement, uh, Lisa Bowman's retirement. And then we congratulate her on her.
good fortune of being able to retire and thank her for her years of service to the district. She did a lot. Second. Second. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes, congratulations and good luck. Um, okay, so uh, we are going to have a listening session in 15 minutes, but we have public comments now. If there's anything around the school board agenda that just came up around the budget or the exciting retirement yeah, or anything. Um, or you can wait. Okay. Um, so that is um, it for this business meeting. So we'll adjourn until 730 um, and we can move the desks and stuff around.